Supposing you picked up a book and read the words to be or not to be. You might take the book back or you might keep it to see if it's worth anything. Now there's a short passage in the Torah which has two peculiarities. Firstly, it appears to be out of context. And secondly, it's enclosed by two nuns turned around the wrong way. As you can see, that's the way the nun should face. But there's two nuns which are reversed. The passage is Numbers chapter 10, verses 35 to 36. And this is the passage beginning here. And here are the two inverted nuns. You can see them so well illustrated in this version. So reading from right to left, it's this passage here. And in English it reads like this. And it came to pass, when the ark set forward, that Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and let thine enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee before thee. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, unto the many thousands of Israel. They are exciting words in English and beautiful in Hebrew also. Listen to this. Vahi bin so'a ha'aron. Vayomer Moshe, kuma Adonai, vayafutsu oyevecha, vayanusu nisanecha mipanecha. Uvnucho yomar, shuva Adonai, rivavot alfei Yisrael. Now, it's been observed that these verses would more logically be placed in the opening chapters of Numbers, which deal with the details of tribal formations during travel and encampment. The fact that it isn't in that position is the reason why the Talmud teaches that it should be viewed as a separate book. So this is to be viewed as a separate book within a book, which contains an important message all its own. So what is the passage saying to which his Jewish people in particular need to pay close attention during his, the historic journey through time? It's this. The two inverted nuns allude to the leading and rearguarding of Israel during their wilderness journey and during their subsequent history. That's found in Osnai and the Torah. Now, you remember the cloud that went before them, that led them by day and the fire by night. The nuns represent God's presence in the cloud and fire. It's his faithfulness, you see, or Ne'eman, which is why it's a nun and no other letter, because Ne'eman means faithfulness. Exodus chapter 14, verse 19 says, And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud, went from before their face and stood behind them. So this anomaly, these two inverted nuns, reveal the secret of Israel's existence and continued survival throughout the ages. You see, it's because God is with them. His faithfulness goes before and after them. Israel is unique among them in being chosen by God to be the bearers of the ark of his presence, which is what this passage is all about. Whether we think of this in terms of the text of the Bible or of the Messiah himself, who was born to the Jews and is their true king, these verses identify the source of the uniqueness of Israel. It's the Shekinah presence of God, of the Lord. Now, much has been spoken by Gentiles and Jews themselves of their cleverness, their wit and invention. But if we or they overlook the lasting effect that their divine encounter at Sinai has had on them, then we miss the point and have learned nothing. God has dwelt among them uniquely. That is their secret. It's a reality that calls for humility and gratitude, not pride or misplaced admiration. And that is is the secret of the church. The survival of the church is due to the very presence, the Shekinah presence of God. Almost any one of the periods of suffering that the Jews have known could have been enough to extinguish this homeless people and would have been more than enough to blot out any other nation. 
The nation of Israel suffers when it hasn't got a home, and it suffers when it has got a home. But Israel survives. In exile, he is told, go back to Palestine. Shortly after arriving there, he's told, get out of Palestine. But he survives. He's literally driven to the wall, the Western Wall. And then he's told, the wall doesn't belong to you. And he survives. To the nation's dismay, Israel survives. Even maps are drawn up that omit the nation of Israel, calling it instead Palestine. But Israel survives. Our own days have witnessed the miracle of a nation resurrected and speaking the ancient tongue of the patriarchs and of the Bible. This is a miracle that has never been seen in history. Once a people are separated from the land, they disappear. Once the language ceases to be spoken, it dies. Not so with Israel and with Hebrew. We've all seen the unforgettable images of the skeletal figures, figures which tottered out of Belson. And the question is put to an unbelieving world. Can these bones live? Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 3. Make no mistake about it, the greater miracle is yet to come. Israel's spiritual regeneration through faith in their Messiah will be the greatest miracle of all. And it is God's perennial presence which guarantees it. The two nuns, one before and one after, allude to this undying fact. The nuns contain a dire warning to all Israel's enemies, warning them against interfering with or harming Israel. In many passages, Israel is described as God's wife, the apple of his eye. For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called. That's Isaiah 54 verse 5, and Zechariah 2.8 says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you, meaning Israel, toucheth the apple of his eye. And by the way, he who blesses Israel will be blessed, and he who curses Israel will be cursed. And being indifferent to Israel's plight is no excuse. Every Christian owes a debt of gratitude to the Jewish people who, according to the flesh, are the brethren of Jesus. Now, why was the letter Nun used and not another? Because the Nun refers to Ne'eman, faithfulness. God is faithful even when we are unfaithful, even when Israel is unfaithful. If, as some people have said, God has given up on Israel because of their unfaithfulness, then he would be more than justified in giving up on every single Christian and on the church as a whole, but he hasn't and he will not. Like us, Israel fails, but God never fails. The bottom line is that God will not allow Israel to fail in his mission. Israel has given the Bible to the world. He has given the Messiah to the world. He will receive him at the end of this age and the Messiah will exalt Israel over the nations as priests and kings when he sits down on the throne of David and rules from Jerusalem. You could almost say with reverence that God has his reputation invested in the people of Israel and in the church. <laughs>